right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit subscribe here on YouTube. Also, make sure to ring that bell so you get new notifications when my latest video drops. So today, we are in Power BI, and I've got a little dashboard here. I want to show you how you can get top 10 products by sales and bottom 10 products by sales. Uh, actually, you could use this technique to get any top 10 dimension by any, uh, by any uh, measure, right? So in this dashboard, and this is really the center of focus here, we have these two bar charts. You can see um, these are products, these are sales. Um, this is in millions, your top 10 products are in millions. Your bottom 10 products by sales are in thousands. And so this table here below uh, basically shows how uh, this, these bar charts are built, right? So uh, we have a product, we have the sales price, and then I have a ranking, right? This ranking of sales price um, determines our top 10 products. This product rank descending, I should say, determines our top 10 products. And then I have a ranking, ascending ranking. If we go down here to the bottom, right, you'll see one through 10. This product rank uh, ascending determines the bottom 10 products, right? So you have to understand how this, uh, this rank calculation is built because it directly uh, determines your top 10 and your bottom 10 products. And then these two fields, bottom 10 and top 10, uh, will power the bar charts here uh, directly. So also, as you can see here, if I were to change the order dates here uh, on my slicer, you'll notice that my top 10 and my bottom 10 will change, right? They're changing here and they're changing uh, uh, in the bar chart. So that's another level of functionality you can add, but you'll need a calendar table in order to do this. So I've shown in another video, let's just go over here to fields, I've shown in another video how you generate a calendar table. I'm not gonna go through this DAX right here, but I want you to see it, right? You can hit pause and you know type it out if you want, but you would generate a calendar table, and then in the data model, right, you just tie your calendar table to your main table. I've got company sales data, and this is this table here is just for uh, housekeeping where I put my uh, my measures and calculations, right? So we can ta also take a little bit of a look here uh, at the data. You'll see I have products, and it's at an order number grain, so I can have product repeat here, and it's just going to aggregate uh, the sales price. If you look at 10, right, 10.5 here, uh, you'll see it will aggregate uh, the sales price here and wherever else I have that product, right? So going back here, um, I've got a version of this. I've showed you this working version. What I'm going to do now is show you a version that doesn't work and will fix the non-working version so you can see how the functionality comes together. So let's go over to this version where um, our calculations don't work so we can learn something from this. So let's Let's go uh, column by column here. Uh, we have our sales price here, right? Fairly straightforward. Um, but we our ranking of the sales price is all ones here. So something is obviously wrong. So let's take a look at product rank descending. Let's go over here to product rank descending. And as you can see, um, I'm using a variable and then we're returning something. Now, I don't have to use this format. I could just simply uh, set uh, product rank description to this expression, but I want you to get used to this format, okay? So if we look here, I'm using the rank X function, right? And if you're gonna use rank X, um, I immediately put all, right? Uh, embedded within my rank X because I'm looking across the entire table. I wanted to uh, consider all products. If you don't have that all in there, um, it's not going to rank correctly. So I go all, right, uh, products, and I want to sum the sales price in a descending fashion, right, and return the product rank. 
But if we take a look here, let me just go back. If we take a look here, every one of our sales price is getting a rank of one. So let's go back in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw calculate around that sum to bring it to the proper context and then we'll return the product rank, right? This product rank is being returned as the value. So now if I hit enter and we can take a look, right? You'll see now it ranks correctly, right? I've got one through 326, right? So that calculate was the key. And so now I can use the, the same concept, the product rank description, uh, to just show the top 10 products. So if we were to go into top 10 products here, and again, we're gonna have to throw calculate on here to get it to work correctly, to get our ranking working correctly, right? So once we have that product rank, I can say if product rank is less than equal to 10, then return the sales price. And I still have to throw a calculate around this, right? So now I hit enter, we go back and take a look, I should only have top 10 products here, right? So because I threw that, that calculate in there for the product rank, um, now it ranks correctly. We're only showing the top 10 products um, that is less than or equal to 10, where the rank is less than or equal to 10. So similar concept for bottom 10. We got to get the, uh, the rank ascending working, where it's going to start from the bottom, right? Started from the bottom. Now we're here, uh, as has been said, right? So let's look at product rank ascending, right? If I go in here, we're going to have to do the same thing, right? Calculate to get that to work. Again, this is more so just to show you the concept. I go in here and boom, you see that changed right away, right? I have a ranking. Now, if I go into my bottom 10 products, where we actually only want to return the bottom 10, uh, again, I'm gonna throw that calculate in here. Now, it took me a while to figure out why it wasn't working. I had to throw the calculate uh, on this to bring it up to the correct uh, filter context. So if I throw the calculate on here, right, again, if my product rank is less than equal to 10, right, we calculate the product rank here, then I want to show the sales price, otherwise it's blank, right? So now I hit enter. Now that product rank less than equal to 10, because it's ascending, it's gonna start from the bottom, right? So one through 10, and then it shows my bottom 10 products. So that's all fine and well. So now what happens when I add an interactive aspect to it? So let's just change the, the dates here. Let's just change the slider. You'll notice, oh, I don't have a bottom 10 anymore, right? Because, let's take a look at that bottom 10. All of these products that have been filtered out by the slicer here are getting a value of one. And so it doesn't rank, all right, if there's no value, and then we jump from one to 193. So how do we get it to jump from one to two, right? We can have a, a, a tie, a multi-way here, a tie here for our ones, but I want this to be two, so I can show a, a bottom 10 products here. So how do we change that? Let's go into product rank ascending here, right? And what we're gonna do is, in the rank X, we're gonna add a little parameter here, dense. So the great thing about dense is, um, it is a way to, um, for rank X, to keep the numbering sequence contiguous, right? So just by throwing dense in here, I'm gonna hit enter, you'll notice I jump from one to two, right? So that's good. So now all I would have to do is change that uh, in this calculation, right? I'm using the product rank. I, I would change it in this calculation to only show, you see we've got ones here, but then we jump to two, right, through 10. That's what I want to show my bottom 10 products. So if I go over here to bottom 10 products, obviously I need to calculate, great it's already in there, and then I'm gonna throw in dense. 
let's say, okay? Boom, you'll notice now I have uh, bottom 10 products, nothing showing for one because there isn't a sales price, so it doesn't show up here in my bottom 10, right? And now you'll see that it's showing frame six starting at two all the way to transmission five, which is 10.5, but that's only nine values, right? What we need is we need a way for it to to include 11 if our uh, data is filtered. So let's go ahead and tweak our bottom 10 products here. Right, I'm gonna add a line and then I'm gonna add this in here. So let's take a look at this. I'm creating another variable called filter number. If uh, is filtered our calendar table. So if our calendar table is filtered, right, uh, on date, then I want to uh, return the number 11. If it's not filtered, then I want to return the number 10. So now in this variable, I can take away the hard-coded 10 here and put in a flexible variable here, filter num. Put that in there, hit enter, and you'll see I have a value for 11 now. So when it's filtered, I go from two to 11 on my bottom products. And when it's not filtered, it should go from two to 10. I'm sorry, it should go from one to 10, right? Because we have a zero value there. So that's just a little trick that you would throw in there. You know, your data is gonna be um, different. Uh, it could change, but this is a general concept that you can use to show your top 10 products by sales, you know, your top 10, whatever dimension you have by whatever measure you have. So this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Get out there and do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching.